out there. Welcome back to DIY Net. We're going to continue our work on the uh, restoration of the Walker Turner bandsaw. We got a couple of uh, mechanisms to disassemble. We disassembled the saw the last time, but uh, we got some smaller parts that we need to dig into. So let's get on that. Yeah, this is the head mechanism, and uh, so let's see if we can get this apart. We got. This rod goes all the way back to the back of the saw, and there's a nut on there, and that's what holds all that in there. Uh, that is a little stiff, so that's not coming out. I uh, have to get something to turn that. Actually, let's see if I. Uh, I don't want to gouge this thing all up if I can avoid it, but I'm going to have to grip it with something. Let's see. Let's get a little. Let's see if that'll come out. gouging up the shaft. Um, all right, we'll worry about that in a minute. I'm going to have to get a, uh, a couple of nuts to go on the end there and turn it, I think. So we'll come back to that. Let's get this out. This locks the... this this wing this uh, wing nut here. Or thumb nut, I guess it's called. That's not a wing. Uh, that locks the up and down movement of the sh oh, actually what does it do okay I don't know what it does that's a mystery the um, there's a hole I don't know if you can see it right there and apparently something was in there and it's not there now so I'm not sure what that was for um, because the blade support mounts on this side, so I'm not sure what was holding that. We have to look at the uh, catalog, I guess, again on that. Let's see if we can. There is a grease nipple on the bottom there. So you have to put how these work is you fill a cup. You can see it. Hope fill the cup up with grease, and then you just give this a twist every once in a while, and it forces the grease into the mechanism. So that's that. Let's see if we can unscrew. Now oh, I see what's going on there. All right, want to get some wrenches. Let's see if we can get the top of this off. I have one little screw here which appears to be holding that. That was not very tight. So, oops, I don't want to lose that. It's just a, well, it's just a set screw. It's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Ah, there's two of them, one on each side. Take that off. Ah, and there comes out the, uh, the piston in there. And actually, that's not a piston. That's the guide for the piston. So that popped right out. Um, there are some grooves down the bottom here. Curious as to know what that is for. Yeah, we'll pull it apart a little further and see. Let's see if that. All right. Did not do that. Okay. So that's what the inside looks like. Hopefully, you can see that. See what happens if I that is still attached. And not quite sure how this disassembles, so we'll have to get something down there. Let me get a uh, the adjustment, the tension adjustment uh, screw is held on by there's two it's going to be tough to see there's two little nuts in there so we're going to have to try to um, um, get those loose before we do anything else so I'm going to go grab some sockets before we go any further with that let's start gathering up the pieces here uh, could always replace the uh, set screws but I don't want to spend any money unless I have to some of the other stuff would be, uh, you could probably get a thumb screw with that, that uh, grease cap. I'd probably have to order that from someplace. So 
I'd rather not have to do that if I don't have to. So put that aside. And uh, let's see if we can get this off. Probably not behaving. All right, some of this stuff's being a bit stubborn. Let's see if we can. Nutted. So that one have it hold on there, and I think there's a washer. Yep. There's a washer in there. All right, let's see if we can get this off. It's stiffening up a bit because we're in a range of travel here that normally wasn't used. So. Hmm. All right, I may have to hit that with some penetrating oil. Seems to be a little stubborn. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit that with some uh, WD-40, and we'll leave that sit for a while, and uh, we'll come back to that one. Actually, I have this piece also. This was the uh, that's the blade guide, and some various things on that. Let's uh, let's disassemble this. While we're at it, so that's the blower tube. I'm going to put these lock nuts back in here. Oh, there you go. Set screw, I should say. No, I do not lose them and get them confused with the other one. Let's see if this is uh, ah, conveniently that is the same size as the uh, as the nut on that. Uh, uh, Tension adjustment screw. And we'll put that down. That comes off. This is probably larger. Let's see if I've got a... I have to go get another socket for that. It's too big. So there's several nuts on this holding the various pieces together. stuck in there because of dirt and get rid of that and let's see what we got here we got one more yeah the, uh, the grease has definitely made it easier to disassemble this because this was not uh, two washers under that for some reason not sure why and it takes that bracket off and then we have the the main bracket and this is the uh, um, the uh, blade support for the back there. There is a screw in there. I'm not going to take it off yet because I don't want to lose it. So put that aside and oh, this was loose. All right, I don't need to suck it. It's coming right off. So and there's two washers on top of this bracket and one underneath. Just take this off. We'll put this back on here like that. And I think, let's see what this does. Is that on there? All right, this, there is a, uh, is that welded? That's what, that's swaged on there. So, all right, so that, there's a collar on here, but it's been swaged onto the, uh, onto the, uh, the bracket itself. So that won't come off and there's a set screw, but We'll leave that be so uh, that's good we'll get that that's done we'll just clean them up when the time comes i don't believe there's anything wrong with them now we've got the gearbox here the problem with this was that there is quite a bit of play in the shaft and it's, and it's not really lining up with the motor very well um something else which i might have mentioned in the last one but i'm not positive one of the pulleys set craftsman on it and I thought maybe the 
it was on the motor and I thought maybe the motor had come off, come off a different uh, saw and been pushed onto this one. Actually, uh, Sears sold a version of this as a Craftsman. So my guess is that they either ran out of pulleys that said Walker Turner or maybe were plain and they started sticking Craftsman on regardless of what they were or they were all labeled Craftsman and um, so that's what that's what it was. So um, it may be in fact that that was the original motor. It looked like it might not have been because of that pulley on there or maybe they just changed the pulley but um, in retrospect it looks like uh, most likely the uh, the motor was the original motor for the for the saw. All right, let's get this off. This should be loose because I've had this off before. Give that a tap. Give that a tap with a uh, soft mallet here and see if we can get that off. There. Oh yes, that's right. This was the one that had the funky set screw on it that was way down in there. Well, let's get that out before we do some damage. Let's see if that did it. Oops. Yeah, this had a. Uh, if you watch the part where we're working on the motor, I think that was part two, if I remember correctly. Um, this had a. Why is that not coming off? This had a. Uh, this had a hex uh, set screw. It was uh, it had a uh, regular slotted uh, set screw on it. It was kind of odd. That does not want to come off of there. I do not recall whether we had that off the first time. I think we did, but I'm not positive. Um, but it's being real stubborn here, so I'm going to leave that for now. No point in damaging anything. Um, did just notice that there's a rubber plastic piece on here that is uh, got a crack in it. I do not know exactly what function that serves. We're going to have to figure that out at some point. All right, let's take off. This is another grease cap. Um, a little different style. This one has a. Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I'm not saying it's not a grease cap. It's an oil fill plug. This apparently is filled with oil, uh, not grease. So there's a plug here to fill that up. So we'll set that aside. Let's see what happens when we take this apart. I'm expecting we're going to have a flood, um, but. Stuck a piece of cloth under here in case this uh, gushes. It's not pouring out the. Oh, you know what? I wasn't being stupid. Well, it wouldn't be the fun of not being stupid. Hold on a minute. Um, I can solve that problem a lot easier since that. Take the plug out and let's see if there's anything in it. All right, doesn't appear to be. So. Be able to remove this without a disaster. Came right off, and there was a uh, the washer underneath the uh, where the drain plug went in a ceiling washer, just like on your oil pan. There was a you know they put a little copper I think it's copper should be copper washer there to seal that up. Let's see what the inside looks like. Well, not a heck of a lot in there. Um, I'm going to have to see if I can get you closer here. It's... Let's see. Here's the... This would be the lower blade mount. Pull that out. And there's that plastic uh, washer that I mentioned. I'm not sure. I think that, you know what, I think that might be a, a oil shield to keep the oil from getting pumped up and thrown up onto the workpiece because uh, this goes right on top of it. That's the blade guard, so or the blade mount rather. So I think that's what that is. Uh, let's see here. 
Well, let's take the... Okay, here's something interesting. There is a tiny, tiny little square screw here, and I have no idea what that goes to. It's just sitting there. I'll leave it in there for now, just so we don't lose it, but it's what that's for. I, well, maybe I'll take it out. Change my mind a lot. Not a lot of mind there, so moving, changing directions is not that difficult. Yeah, I have no idea what that's for. I'm going to leave it for now so I don't lose it. All right, let's take the uh, bottom off the gearbox. And that screw is a little bit shorter than the ones that came off the uh, side casing. I'm saying all these things, not because it's important for, uh, for your purposes, but... If I have to look at the video to put this thing back together, I will uh, make a note to myself, essentially. Okay. It's really not the right screwdriver for that. Screwdriver is too small, there are risk stripping. These are loose, but you can risk risk stripping that out. You don't want to do that, so take two seconds to get the proper one. And these all have a star washer underneath them, um, which is the cheap and ineffective way to try to uh, um, keep the uh, keep the nuts from the screws from loosening. So that's the bottom of the uh, uh, bottom of the box, and that has a that. Um, hole in there, the uh, mechanism, the up and down mechanism on the saw comes to, slides into there and the grease when you, when it's upright, the oil sits down in here and lubricates that because that's the part that's really uh, uh, um, getting the wear and then by splash it throws it up to the top where it lubricates the uh, top part where it slides and the other parts of the mechanism. So what we have in here are, uh, there is a, um, there's a crank down in here. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's see if we can get closer. Crank down in here, uh, which goes on a little connecting rod, and that shoves the, um, the, the, um, the drive rod up and down. So it's just like, basically like a car uh, crankcase. And uh, let's see what we can do here. So we need to, there's a small, I'm going to go get some wrenches so that I'm not wrecking these uh, little nuts. I just forgot to turn the camera on. So I didn't show me taking the drive rod out, but what you do is you loosen this screw that's on there. And the drive rod goes up through there. And once that's loose, you can push the drive rod through. So that's the mechanism that forces it to go up and down. Now that we have that off, let's see what we can do here. We have got all right, that bracket which holds the drive rod to the connecting rod just slides right off once you do that. Um, that is probably bronze, it looks bronzy. And uh, what you would expect because it has to be a uh, bronze is somewhat self lubricating. So uh, that's often used when there's um, parts are rubbing against each other, otherwise, they'd have to put a bearing in there. Now, the connecting rod, I don't know, oh, there's a gasket on that side thing too, which I didn't realize. I, you're not going to be able to see this, but inside here, there is a screw holding the connecting rod onto the crankshaft itself. So let's see if we can get that out. There's some oil on here. I'm not sure what the oil level is supposed to be, but pretty clearly it wasn't. That is a little bit of a problem. Uh, I don't want to stress.
strip that screw. What? Ah, there we go. Okay. That was just stuck a little bit probably from all the motion over the years. Again, I don't think this has ever been taken apart. So just a very small screw and a washer on there. And then once you have that, the connecting rod just pops right off. And the um, the narrower, I'm just again making a note for myself basically, the narrower end of the uh, of the shank goes on the crankshaft. The other part goes on the, uh, the drive rod. Oh, another interesting thing is that there are bronze. If you can see the edges there, there are bronze uh, bushings inside these to uh, um, reduce the friction. You can't have steel on steel because it'll gall. So, um, and they look pretty good. There's hardly any scoring on those, so that's good. That's what I expected. I think this was well maintained. Thing I've seen so far that wasn't well maintained is they've got the oil run low, but um, other than that, it looks pretty good. And let's get, um, let's see what we got here. This, there's a kind of a little um, flange on here. It does not appear to be part of the casting, but I don't want to pry on it too much. Uh, it's not absolutely certain. It's not absolutely critical that it comes out of there. And that has a uh, has a bronze insert on it also. I think I'll just leave that. So I don't want to damage it. It's not super important that that comes out of there. I like to get every part of part that I can, but um, it's not always critical that every single piece comes off. All right, so what we're going to do now is, now that I've got that um, now that I've got that all assembled in there, I should be able to drive the um, shaft out. But let's, um, I don't want to damage anything, we'll have to do this very carefully. So let me get a drift pin and we'll give that a shot. Hey, love. Hey, How you doing? Ding a ling a ling. Ow. What's up, guys? <laughs> whacking me so hard with his tail that it actually hurt my knee. Goofball. You want your peeps, don't you? Anytime we get better, you can have yourself. You good boys. <laughs> now, let's give this a tap and see what we get. Oh, yeah, it's going right through. Okay, pulleys loose, and the crankshaft fell through. So that's the gearbox disassembled. Now, the only mystery was why was this so loose back and forth? Let's take a look. Okay. Um, from what I can see. It appears that the pulley just did not go down there far enough. So that might not have been the right pulley. Or it was designed to flop around, which I can't believe. So um, the problem is this shaft is very, um, there's a lot of play in it, which means I can't really, it's hard to get the pulley all the way on there properly. And my guess is either this was not the right pulley, or they, um, may have been just designed to have that much slop in it. I kind of find that a little hard to believe, um, because it did make it difficult to get this on. So, um, what I might end up doing is let's take a look at this further so there is a set screw in this which is holding it to the shaft but the shaft ah ah aha there we go that was the problem okay so how this works is 
there is a set screw in the pulley which goes onto the shaft. The shaft has a flat on it. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a flat side on that pulley and the set screw is just supposed to, to bear on that flat. And then the nut that, would, that goes on the outside of this would hold the pulley on there a little bit. That would also hold the pulley on there. So that's the shaft is gouged around here, so my guess is that that was not installed properly. The pulley was not on the um, um, the set screw was not in the right position to catch this flat spot, and then because this didn't slide on all the way because this was moving, they didn't get the nut on properly either. So. Um, I think that was largely a problem of installation and nothing particularly wrong with the uh, mechanism itself. So when we put this back together, I think what I will do is put the pulley on before I assemble the rest of this back together. And this way I can make sure the pulley goes all the way on and that will take up all the slack and then we'll be able to get the nut on. So that will solve that problem. So nothing broken, just a, uh, a uh, idiosyncrasy of this particular uh, arrangement. And again, there's the shaft out. And the shaft appears to have some, there is some scoring on the um, shaft where it goes through the, or the um, bearing. Let's see, let's see what the bearing looks like. Bearing looks okay. There is actually a, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this or not, there is a bronze insert going into the um, casting and that uh, this rides on that and there's a small amount of galling on this but it appears to be out here where the um, where it comes out of the uh, shaft housing and there is a there's a bronze uh, bushing in that too so my guess is this is due to um, the shaft uh, because this was moving in and out because the pulley wasn't seated properly I think that was uh, causing that small amount of fretting on there we'll polish that a little bit that's not it's not my fingernail is barely catching on it, so I'm not too worried about that. So uh, we'll straighten that out when we get to that point. So nothing wrong with the gearbox. Cleaner up and painter. We should be in good shape. So. Yeah, that is what you call dirty. It shouldn't be that hard to get that out. Probably should not be pounding on the blade uh, attachment point either. But, um, there we go. All right. So that's loose. And uh, we'll try to get this. Let's see if we can get this off the shaft now without doing too much damage here. Ah, loose. Okay. Good. Stink bug carcass. So that's off. That just needs cleaning and paint. And uh, we'll clean up those dovetails. I think th there was a lot of old grease in there, and I think it just um, it was kind of solidified and it didn't want to come off of there. So that was the reason for that. Now we have got what's going on here. So there's a spring in there, which you would expect for the disassembly. Let's, ah, okay, here. I thought that was part of the casting. It's not. There's a nut right here. And I believe that's what's holding this mechanism inside here. So let's go see if we can take that out. I may have to get a bigger wrench. Let's see. Yeah, that's... And go grab a bigger wrench and we'll come back. Alright, let's 
see what we got here. All right, so that is uh, three quarters. Let's see if we can get that. Ah, came right off. Now, uh, possibility this may go spring. So let's get. I'm not sure how this is in here. So, try to avoid hitting the face with any springies. Doesn't feel like it's under tension. Okay, so that's the bottom uh, weight holder. And let's see what happens here. Is this going to come out without. Oh, yeah, there we go. And there is two springs, one on the bottom, a set of washers, and then there's a spring on the top, and then there's the mechanism itself. And that's just an empty tube, pretty much, except for the, it's got a narrower section at the bottom. All right, so we are pretty much completely disassembled now. My next question is this. How does the air pump work? Um, we have, let's see. Let's take, let's take a look at this. Okay. I believe that right, there's a tiny hole up here, and apparently this broke off. Something broke off because that calf is rust is, is uh, dirty right there, and then there is a the I don't know how well you can see this the that opening goes into the um, center tube here, which goes down inside this. So I am thinking that was how the blower worked. I have to look at, I'm going to have to research that a little bit more, but I think that up and down motion is how the blower worked. And I am guessing that there were probably some kind of O-ring or something on there at some point. Again, I got to look into it. And let's see, is this... Find something to stick up in there. I don't have anything. Is full of crap. I'm trying to see if this is solid. Now there's it's it's packed full of garb of uh, grease inside there. So um, I'm thinking that that hole communicates down through here to this, and it's that action which causes the um, the blower to work. There is no ah okay the plot thickens because that, that's definitely what it is. See that there's two holes on that. I don't know if you can see it. There's some holes going around the outside of that uh, larger tube that this fits down inside. And that would be the intake of air for the blower. So, um, don't know whether there was O-rings on that or not. That might just be set up that way for the valves. I don't know. Uh, but I think that's how that works, and I think the ah okay there was the hole was plugged here, and it was full of dirt. I think it might have just been sawdust from the look of it. So my guess is this, from what I'm seeing here, they stopped using the blower because this fitting broke off here, and the blower tube came out of here into down to the blower nozzle. And I think this just broke. They never fixed it. And that is why the blower was not being used. I'm not sure it wasn't working. It just wasn't being used because they couldn't attach the tube, the rubber tube to that. So we're going to have to fix that somehow. That's got a, uh, um, figure out how to uh, att fix that attachment. Now there's a couple of options here. This is, all right, it does feel like it's steel. So, um, might be able to uh, braze or silver solder a, a, a new thing to put the tube on. We'll have to check that out. I'll have to look at the uh, the pictures from the uh, 
um, the catalog and see um, see what exactly uh, that looked like. But maybe we can reproduce that somehow. So I think uh, that's what we'll do with that. And let's see, that's out. So we've got this apart. And the only other thing I can take off is the, uh, we can take the grease fitting off. You know, the more stuff you can get off, the more you can clean. So um, it's always good to get off everything you can. There's some items I'm not going to attempt to take off because it's just going to damage it. So that was a uh, half inch fitting. And it just comes right out. It's, there is some grease in there. So they were, at some point they were greasing it. So uh, that's that. So take that out. So we've stripped this down. Um, pretty much stripped this down as far as we can. There's nothing else I'm going to try to take off at this point. There's only, uh, the other thing was that little, there's that funky little screw on here, which I do not know. Wrench the right size, and oh, that one's good. So that is one quarter. No idea what this does. Not sure why it's on there, but it's definitely a screw. To look at the parts diagram and see if this. Um, diagram and see what uh, what this thing is for. I might as well get it out. Clean it up. Yeah, it's in a strange location. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with anything. I'm not sure what it's for. Oh. Aha. Okay, I think I solved a mystery. <laughs> The table bracket mounts onto this. And if you remember, the table was not sitting properly. I think this might be a adjustment to set the um, table in relation to the, uh, the base of the machine. In other words, the, not tilting this way because that's you can tilt it that way. It's got it can go 45 either way, but back and forth. I think this may, that the bottom of that bracket, table bracket, may have rested on this. And that might have been one of the reasons why the table was not quite um, where it should have been. So I am thinking that um, maybe we do not need the shim that we were talking about in the earlier episode. Maybe this will solve the problem. And the fact this has, appears to have a very fine thread on it. It's taken a lot of turns to get it out of here, so my guess is that that is in fact an adjustment. A, uh, if it was a screw, not come out of there at all. If it was a, um, just to hold something on, I don't think that the, the uh, threads would be that fine, and it seems to be coming out of there very slowly, or. Well, it's turning. I don't see any threads, so I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I think I will leave that as is. I'm gonna go try to find out um, just exactly what's going on, what's going on with that. So, all right. Well, anyway, everything's disassembled. Nothing is broken. Um, nothing is uh, worn beyond reason. So I think this is going to be just a question of cleaning everything up, painting it, and putting it back together. So um, this is. Well, I'm not going to say that it's been an easy project because as soon as I say that, everything will break. But um, it has been so far less horrible than uh, some of the other things I worked on. So uh, hopefully, it will continue that way. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for watching, as always, and we'll see you in. Uh, see, this is part five, so we'll see you in part six.